hey all of you hope you guys are great so this is where we left in the last to last video in the last video we'll talk about the url structure that how we're going to create the endpoint in our api so if you haven't watched make sure you watch that in this video we're going to cover the get method so we have already seen a couple of example in the last to last video but in this video we're going to build the actual get method for our api so let's come here and let me give this comment get request and we're going to use this app and we'll call this get and here we're going to construct the endpoint so slash api v1 your api can have multiple versions so this is the brand new api which we are building for our nft marketplace so it's totally new so that's why i have called version one but just imagine that we have made this API live and others are using in their project. But after six months, we have decided to add some extra functionality into our API. So in such scenario, you can't simply come and change this version one to version two. Because if you do so, what will happen? Those who are already using your version one API, for them, your API would not work. So that's why we provide this version one. If you want to add any extra functionality, we'll call it version two. And in that, we're going to build all the functionality. So that will not create any problem for those who are already using version one. Okay. So version one would be separate and version two would be separate. That's why it's always important that you have to define the version name in your API. So that's the version name we have. And here we're going to construct the NFT resource. Okay. And this NFT endpoint will have all the resource about the NFT for getting all the NFT, single NFT, creating NFT, deleting NFT, updating NFT. So that all information would be stored in this single resource related to NFT. Okay. So we'll have a same endpoint for the user for the review. Okay. So let's focus on the NFT first. So that's the URL we have construct and here you have to follow the same pattern request and response. It's going to be an arrow function. And here we're going to take the and here we're going to send the response. So we have to define the status to 200 and we are going to send the response in the form of JSON. So first define status and the status is going to be success. If we successfully send the request, then we have to say success. And here we have to send the data. Okay. In this, I found that the, we don't have the data to send back. Okay. So let's come up here. Here we're going to, in the NFT data, in the data folder, we have this files. So we're going to use this NFT sample data to test our API. So here you can see we have all this data. And we're going to read this data and send in back of response. Okay. So let's come here. Let's come here. First thing we have to do is to get the data. So we'll say NFTs and we have to use the FS module. So actually I remember we don't have that. So let's come up here and we have to import the FS module FS and required FS. And this we are getting from Express. Okay. So when you install Express, it's comes along with that. Okay. So don't need to install separately. We need to install FS module and now we can use that to read the data. So let's come here where we are bring this down. We'll say, so we'll take this FS model and we're going to use this read file synchronous. Okay. So it's a part of JavaScript ECMA 6. So what it does, it will load the data behind the scene. Okay. And here we're going to take the template literal. We have to define the directory. So dash dash dr name. So this means that in the current directory. Okay. From there, we have to get. So this dr main we are in the current directory and from there we have to get into the nft data and from there we have to get into the data and inside that we have this nft sample dash dr name means always current directory so that's how we have here and that's the data we have and now we have to convert this data into a javascript object because it's in the form of json okay so let's make json pass and we have to wrap this so that's working fine we have to simply make it capital not small now you can see here we are getting some short of error in our terminal so let's have a look so it says dr name is not defined but we have dr name okay i remember we have to provide one more space so make make it to a space right now our server is working fine okay right now we don't have any error looking fine and now we're going to simply console log out the data we have received so let me show you what we have exactly so nfts if i save here you can see we have all the data we can successfully read the entire data from the json file and we can log into our terminal you can see we have all the nft id and let's bring this out and that exact data we're going to send here in the data okay so we'll say nft dash nft so it will work and here we're going to find out the length that how many nft we have so we can say result and we have the nft we can check the length for that okay length so here we get the entire length 
so this is the end point we have and now we can test in our postman let's come back here so this is the root domain and here we have to define the api so here we have api slash v1 slash nft and we are using get method so let's come here and that's the thing we have now simply we have to make a request and here you can see it's working fine finally we have able to read the data from our json file and into our postman so you can see the result altogether we have nine array and here we have the data we have nfts and in that we have all these nfts okay looking fine so let's come here and here you can see inside the data we have this nft nft so i have given the nft name so if we have nft nft we can simply remove one nft and we can type simply nft okay because that same thing we are sending here okay so it will work in the same way okay if you make the request we'll have the result now let me save this one okay so we don't need to write the same url over and over again that will save a lot of time so let's call it something like get get okay and that's will save inside this folder okay so this is the get request we have and that's we have inside this folder okay so whatever url we're going to construct we're going to make a file for it and we're going to save inside this nft folder okay so we can easily able to switch and we don't need to write all the urls over and over again so if you make the request you will get all the results looking fine so that's how you can able to make the get request okay so hope everything makes sense you have understood that how you can easily able to use it let's paste it here and things are looking good so that's the only thing i want to cover in this video about the get method and the next video we'll talk about the post request okay how you can write something in your api so let's move to that